you to college and have ADHD, what are you expected to encounter once you get there? Well, one thing you're going to encounter is going to be papers. I've gone over that in a different episode. And the other thing that you will experience a lot of is going to be quizzes, tests, exams, maybe one, maybe all three, but you're going to experience them because your teachers will give them to you to test your knowledge. Now, what I want to go over today is going to be a lot of different tips on how to succeed at doing tests, taking tests, studying for tests, preparing for tests. And so I have some tips for you. You have some different strategies that you can do to get the best grade that you can get on a test. So this is ADHD College Test Success for 2021. And let's get started. Let's get into it. Let's get you test success in your college endeavor. Number 10, study an environment as close as you can to the environment you're going to take the test in. Now, I don't mean go and study in a classroom unless you have a classroom available, then that would be great, but you don't have to do that. What I mean by that is if you're going to take a test in a quiet classroom, then make sure when you study at home that your environment at home is also quiet. If you're going to take the test at a desk, then make sure to study at a desk if you have a desk available to you. So you want to make your environment as the environment that you will take the test in. Because if you do that, if you have similar things going on in the environment as you do when you take the test, then when you take the test, it will jog your memory because you'll remember, man, I was sitting at my desk. It was quiet. I remember when I looked at this certain answer, this is the answer that I came up with. And you can visualize, you will be visualizing yourself at your desk or on your couch, whatever you were at when you decided to study. And it's going to be great for you to bring back some of those answers that you're looking for. When you get on that test and you can't find an answer, you can go back and visualize and say, oh, yeah, I remember doing that when I sit down at my desk and I look through my book and this is the answer here. So if you study in the same environment that you do as taking a test or the environment that you will take the test in, it will jog your memory as you're taking the test. It will help you to remember how you were studying, what you were studying, what you were going over, what you may have missed while you were studying. And you might think it's silly, but it does work. Now, the other thing is you probably want to study in a place for your distractions, unless your test environment is going to be full of distractions. When you have distractions, have ADHD, you may not finish or even study for your test. You may not finish studying for a test. You may not study at all. You may just be so distracted by other things that you can't study and can't concentrate and can't understand the material that you need to understand or learn the material you need to learn for your test. And so try to find a place that is free of distractions or has less distractions. You know, if you're going into and studying at Starbucks, which I've said a whole bunch of times, and Starbucks doesn't create a major distraction for you, then fine, go study at Starbucks. But again, going back to studying in the same environment as you would take the test, I would actually suggest that you study in a quiet place or a quiet place at home. Now, depending on where you find your quiet place or whatever your study environment, then use that. But just try to make it as much as a test environment as you can and free of distractions as much as you can. Number nine, test yourself. Test yourself before the test. Why? The reason is this. It's going to give you more repetition at the information. It's going to give you more of a chance to see the information. It's going to give you more of a chance to hear yourself going over the information and practice with memory, which is really, really important when you have ADHD, especially if you're trying to commit things from your short-term memory to your long-term memory so that you can do well on a test. So some classes may have a pre-test. And this is a test that you take to see what the knowledge is and you take it or practice test. Some people call it, you're going to have a test like that in some classes. And that's great because you can go through, do the practice test as many times as you want to and see what you really know. And generally that test is pretty much like the test that you'll take later, the actual test you'll take later. So practice as much as you can on that test. But if you don't have the availability of that, then maybe there is a practice test in the book that you're studying or whatever, or make your own practice test. And the way you do this is you take the information that you need to know and you write out questions and then you try to go through and see which questions you can answer. And if it has to be like multiple answers, then you need to figure out, okay, I need 10 answers for this question. And so you make 
a question saying, what are the 10 answers for this? And you go through and you see if you can name them all, see if you can come up with the answer of them all. And if you can't, you go back and study and then you try again and try again and try again. And you might even try every day to do a section every day and test yourself every day. And that way, when you get to the test, you'll have gone over the information a lot and it will be much easier to bring up those answers because you have started to commit them or you have committed them to long term memory. Number eight, take breaks. You are going into breaks when you have ADHD. There's no way around it. When you're studying, getting into the material, trying to figure out everything that you need to do for the test, trying to go over everything, test yourself, all these kind of things, you're going to need some kind of break. And this is just with ADHD in general when you're trying to do something mentally challenging. So make sure you have breaks somewhere in your study process. Now it could be 25 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you think is good for you, but you need to take them. And when you take them, you need to let your mind rest because you've been putting so much information in your mind and you've been using your mental capacity so much that now your brain's like, hey, look, I, I need a break before we go on to this next thing or before we put any more information into me I need a break. And you need to take those breaks and not concentrate on other things. So think about meditating on your breaks. You know how people say, I don't have time to meditate. Well, when you're studying, you need to take time to meditate. Just take time and say, okay, I'm not going to concentrate on anything right now. I'm just going to let my mind be kind of clear, kind of free, kind of not think of anything that is mentally challenged at the time. So you can come back, look at the material, refresh, and dive back in, and then start studying again. So Vitally important that when you are studying, you need study breaks. This allows your working memory to kind of say, okay, I've got all the information out. Okay, I've kind of committed to long-term memory now, and now I'm ready to take in more information. And you can implement breaks at the right time for you and the length for you. Number seven, if you're doing mentally demanding activity, mentally challenging activity such as studying, you need to keep your blood glucose level up. And this will help you study, this will help you concentrate, this will help you focus on the material and then taking the material and help you retain it. Because at some point you're going to be studying and your brain is going to say, hey, look, I'm running low on fuel for me to keep doing this and taking in this information. I either need a break or you need to give me something to keep going. And so when you're doing this mentally demanding activity like studying, then you're going to need to have a little bit of something in your hand that you're sipping on, maybe a sports drink, lemonade, something that has a little bit of sugar in it. Now, notice I said sip and not gulp, because if you're gulping, taking big, huge gulps, that's not what is going to work. You need to have something that you just sip on. And so I didn't come up with this idea. Dr. Russell Barkley did. And I saw it in a video. I thought, wow, that is an amazing study tip. And so I want to bring it to you in case you have not seen his material. And so I want to read to you exactly what he says, since this is his idea. And what he says is this. If you have an extensive task involving your executive brain like an exam, you have to do. You better be sipping on some lemonade, Gatorade, or sports drink. You are going to have to keep the blood glucose level up. And I thought this was an amazing tip and I wanted to bring it to you. So hopefully this tip helps you in studying for your college test. Number six, exercise. Exercise is good for being able to concentrate, focus, and retain information better. I've said this before, you do want to have some sort of exercise each and every day, and it doesn't matter what kind of exercise that you do. And it doesn't matter where you're starting from, just start and find some exercise you like, some exercise that you can do. Now, why? Because of the fact that exercise increases neurotransmitter production. So dopamine, serotonin, neuroprenephrine, they're all increased. And these are neurotransmitters directly related to concentration, focus, motivation. They help your brain to do these activities. And it also helps for executive function. Working memory, the one short-term memory that you need to kind of take information in and then push it to long-term memory. The memory that you need to manipulate information as you are taking it in, that memory is affected by exercise because exercise affects executive function. Try to get some kind of exercise because I guarantee you it will help you. 
in some way, somehow with executive function, which is great for anyone with ADHD. But don't take my word for it. Take what Dr. Russell Barkley said as well. We're going to go back to him and what he said about exercise, and then you can see what I am talking about as well. And Dr. Russell Barkley says routine physical exercise boosts the tank, refuels it, and creates a bigger executive function tank. Research shows that exercise benefits ADHD more than any other psychiatric disorder. Right there, you see what he's saying. It's one of the ones that boosts that tank, that executive function tank that you need to study and retain information. But the other thing is it benefits ADHD more than any other psychiatric disorder. So I'm going to take his word for it. I think it's very important when he's saying something like this and he's very respected in the field and he's done a lot of research on ADHD. Number five, positive affirmations, positive self-talk is pretty much essential when you're trying to study because you might get a little down on yourself when you're trying to study and trying to figure out things and just are not getting the material and are frustrated then it makes it harder to concentrate and focus on anything because you're like man if i could just get this one part i would be good for the test but i still can't get it and the test is only a day away and i don't know what to do so you need to have positive affirmations positive self-talk, and you want to try to do each and every day. So each and every day you get up and say, hey, I'm going to do great on my test. I'm going to pass my test. I'm going to study. I'm going to retain all the information. I'm good. I'm awesome. I can do this. And that will help you throughout your day. So when you are going through and studying and, and getting all frustrated, you'll remember the things you said before and say, yeah, I'm frustrated now, but I said I could do this. I know I can do this. I know I can retain that information. I know I can learn that information. So just try positive affirmations and that positive self-talk or a self pep talk. That's why they give these pep talks at these sporting events. They say all these things and you're like, rah, rah, and all this kind of stuff, right? And we're going to beat the team. We're going to score a whole bunch of points and all this kind of stuff, right? It's to motivate you, to get you to do more, to get you to push through. And that is what positive self-talk and positive affirmations do. Because you start off the day, you say them, and you say them each and every day, or you say them a couple times a day, and you start getting the feeling, okay, I can do this. I was frustrated, but now I can do this because I remember what I said this morning, and I want to accomplish that. Number four, break things down. We have ADHD, you have to break things down. Whether it's a big task, a big task, whatever it is, you need to break it down. Any big activity that you have a whole bunch of things to do that has a huge result that takes a huge amount of effort, you need to break it down. And tests also have a huge effort because you may be looking at one chapter, two chapters. Maybe you're looking at four or five chapters and you look at that task and say one of two things or maybe both these things and say, you know what? That test is three months away. It's a final exam. It's three months away. I'm obviously going to have time to study for it. And it's so far out, I'd rather do something else right now. Or you're going to look at it and say, that test is huge. And yeah, I don't want to do that. I don't even know how to study for that. How am I going to remember all of that when I have these different memory issues that are going on? Like, what in the world am I going to do? Those are two examples. So breaking it down is kind of essential for two very good reasons. One is going to simplify the information. So instead of looking at three months of information, you can break it down into sections and you break it down into sections for you. As many sections as you need, because yes, you have a test at three months out, but now you're breaking it down into sections to figure out, okay, what do I need to learn today? What do I need to learn this week? And you eventually get all the information and in that you need for the big test and also some other tests along the way. You finally broken it down to different sections and that's amazing. So you're wondering how are you going to get done with those different sections? How are you going to accomplish them? The great thing about when you break something down and you accomplish one section, it's going to motivate you to go and do the next section. That's because when you finish a section, then dopamine's released, just like when you're in a video game and finish a screen or clear a board or defeat an enemy. Same process here. And the other thing, if you want to have a reward when you finish these little sections or whatever you want to do, then you can do that as well and that motivate you even more. 
as long as the reward is something you like. Number three, relate the information to an acronym or something visual. For an acronym, you could do something like ABC, Apple, Broccoli, Cinnamon. I have no idea why I thought of those things, but it could be a cooking class that you're in and you have to remember these three things. And so you can make up all sorts of acronyms that mean something to you that don't mean anything to anybody else, but it helps you to remember because when you think about the thing that you're trying to remember, you can look back and say, okay, I remember A is this, B is this, well, what is C? What is C? I remember when I was studying, sitting there, I remember that C was this. And then you'll bring it up in your mind and you'll be able to put it on the test. Now you can also use something visual. And what I mean by that is going to be that you have some sort of visual aid. And it means that you're probably going to take a pen, a piece of paper, and draw out something meaningful to you. So, for example, if you want to represent someone that is speaking and you want to remember something they said and you say, hey, I'm going to relate this to a stick figure that I have and you relate it to a stick figure and that's a visual representation or visual aid for you. And when you get on the test, you can think back to that stick figure and say, I represented this speaking person by this stick figure. So I can recall their name. Maybe you have something that is hard to stay for that you need to remember for the test. Your visual representation that you're using is a square and it has four points on it. And those four points have four different words by it. And so now you have this visual representation of a square with these four different names or four different things on each corner. And so when you go to take the test and you've learned what these four corners mean, you can go back and say, okay, I'm trying to remember, trying to remember. Oh yeah, I remember I did the square. I remember this point was over here. 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 So you're visualizing what you drew or what kind of symbol you use to study before. And it makes it so much easier to recall things. Number two, reread the questions, sometimes more than once. And the reason is because when you have ADHD, you might have a tendency to skim through a question and then immediately put your answer down. But the question might be asking for something different than your answer. Maybe the question is asking for most instead of least or least instead of most. Or maybe it's asking for two answers and you only gave one answer. You may just go through those questions and not really know all the information that you need to know to answer the question correctly. Or maybe you're sitting there and going, I know the answer to this question, but none of these answers relate. They don't relate until you go back and read the question again. And so just make it a habit of going through and reading the questions to make sure that you understand the question. Make sure that you're given the right answer. Make sure that you are recalling the right information. Make sure that you're given enough answers that are required for the question. And it can be hard when you have ADHD because you want to go, go, go and get done with this test. And so impulsivity may not be your friend when you're taking a test. It usually is not because of the fact you're going to have to really sit back and think. And that may be a little bit hard when you have ADHD. The point is, reread the question and maybe reread it more than once, maybe two times, three times, whatever it is that you need to make sure that you understand the question. Now, some questions you can just look at and say, oh yeah, I know the answer to that. You know, oh, there's a picture here. Oh, this answer goes here. This answer goes there. And this answer goes here. And that may be easy. That would be the questions that you are good on, right? You don't really need to reread them. You have the answer right there saying label this, right? And then they give you the answers that you label it from. But questions that are more complicated than that, you definitely need to go through and reread them to make sure that you understand the question. You're given all the answers and you're given the answer that is asked for. Because the worst thing is to get a test back, see you got a lower grade than you expected, and you look at the answer to one of the questions and say, wait, I knew that answer. I know exactly what the answer is. And then you realize what you've done is you missed one of the answers or you answered the opposite way that they want you to answer. And you're like, oh man. I knew the answer all along, but because you didn't reread the questions, you ended up putting a different answer and you got it wrong. The important thing for you to do when you have ADHD because of the impulsivity and the tendency to miss things or skim things or skip things completely, you need to make sure that you are rereading every question on the test. Number one, if you're taking too long on an answer to a question, skip it and come back to it because there are so many other answers probably through the end of the test that you can answer. You might know the answer to, 
And if you waste too much time on this one question, you may not get to them. Basically what I'm saying, just make this a rule. If you spend too much time on one question, just skip it, come back to it. Now you do have to make sure that you do come back to that question. So a lot of times if you're taking a test on a computer, they have the thing that says, hey, you haven't answered question six, nine, 22, 54, whatever, right? You can then go back and make sure that you answer those. Now, if you're taking one of the older or old school tests, where you have the little strip of paper and it has the bubbles that you have to fill in. At that point, you got to go through and look at each number to make sure you didn't miss to fill one in or you didn't fill one in. And so that takes a little more time, but you need to make sure that you go back to that question that you might have missed or you might just not know the answer to and see if you can figure out the answer. But you also want to just go back and check not to just see if you missed or didn't fill in a question, but if your other answers are correct and you're sure about them. Because there have been times where I've taken a test and got all the way through and got all the answers and then gone through and checked my answers and said, oh, wait, this answer is not this. It is actually this answer. And so I would have missed that one had I not gone back and checked my answers. So there's a couple of different things I talked about here. One, if you're spending too long on a question, skip it, come back to it. Two, make sure that you have filled in all the questions. You filled in all the answers that you needed to for all the questions. And three, go back and check your answers one more time. And here's a bonus one for you. It's not really a test taken thing, but I thought it would be also good for you to know that sometimes they have accommodations where you can get more time to take the test specifically for people with ADHD. So if you think you will need more time, generally in all your classes, when you take a test, go to the college office and just ask them if it is available. Usually at most colleges, it is, but I can't say for every one. Just see if your college offers that. And if it does, great, then you can have that accommodation of extra time on the test. And sometimes you even have things like a quieter environment, just something to check into, just something to look at. It's more of a hey, try to get your environment a certain way than an actual test taking strategy. So I figured I would mention it as a bonus point. And that's all the information I have for you today. I hope that you've enjoyed it. If you are on YouTube, do me a favor, press the subscribe button for me as well as ring that notification bell. Leave a like and a comment. If you're on a podcast app, subscribe on the podcast app as well. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Have a great day and I will talk to you later. <laughs>